Hello, this is Warlord. Today we're going to take a look at using gravity. This is something that we've gone over before, but I keep getting email once again on how to use gravity or how do you spin an object while you're using gravity, things like that. So that's what we're going to take a look at. Let's go ahead and get started. Now what we're going to do is just use some simple props. We'll go ahead and load the Jeep and I'll use Gwen. I want to place her in the Jeep and it's easier just to use the operate command if you're not familiar with it. Tell the driver to get in. That places her in the Jeep quickly without you having to do anything. Now if you don't want the motion before that you need to switch to Gwen and remove all animation. And now you'll have her sitting in there and it was a lot quicker than trying to pose her in there. Now let's go ahead and select our Jeep and let's go up here to our physics settings. Let's turn on uh, our physics and let's see what happens here. Okay, the Jeep just falls. The first thing that tells us is she's not hooked to the Jeep. Gwen isn't. So we will go to Gwen, pick parent, hook it to the Jeep and let's see what happens. Okay. Now for what we're doing here, that's working. Now all it's doing here is just falling through the floor because we have not put a floor in there to hold it. Uh, so nothing really spectacular about that. Now this is where we start finding out about physics. Let's go ahead and open up the physics world settings and you'll notice that we're on minus 9.8. So let's just take that to zero and you'll notice nothing happens. That's because we're not, there's no gravity. We're not telling it to do anything. But let's take that to a plus 9.8 and see what happens with it. Okay. Now we're finally getting it to do something. She's attached to it and it's rising. Now let's say we want to slow that down. Let's go to 2. And we want it to go back a little bit. Well, let's just start experimenting. Let's go with 3 on Y. Okay, that's a little quick. Let's go to 1. This is personal preference. Not really enough. Because you want to see it going up, but also going back. Because what we're going to do is spin this thing, make it tumble. But now we're not going to use gravity to tumble it. Okay, now we've got it going up and back. Now it would be nice if we could just grab the Jeep from here and just curve it and make it tumble. But the problem is, gravity overrides that. I mean, your keyframe is actually there that you did with it. We're going to go ahead and remove all animation for right now to remove that keyframe. But as you can see, it overrode the keyframe to where it wouldn't actually rotate it. So there is a simpler way to do this. And what we're going to do there is not actually use the Jeep as the physics. We're going to do what we most often do when we run into this problem, and that is load a dummy. Which, for those of you not familiar with, is just a block. And we're going to make that block the actual physics-enabled object. And then we're going to grab the Jeep and we're going to attach it to box 01. And you still have the same effect. Because gravity affects everything. We didn't set it to do that just for the Jeep. We actually set it to do it uh, for everything that you're using, every physics enabled object that's in the scene. So now we can go ahead and grab the Jeep and as we move back we can give it a tumble. However you want to do it. Now that was a little quick. So let's go into the Jeep and what we're going to do here is move this slow it down and now we're starting to get a little more control and we haven't even used curves yet 
Now let's go down a little further. Actually, let's speed that up a little. Let's come to right here. Let's grab our Jeep still. And rotate it on around. And there it starts to blow out of the frame. Now at this instance we have a little too much gravity going up. The gravity is on our box. And it's just a, a, actually the only physics enabled object in here is the box. We got two for going up. Let's go to one. And there that slowed it some because you're starting to see the rotation. Let's go to one on each and see what happens. That's a little smoother. Now you can do this as many times as you want as far as how many times you rotate this thing. Uh, it just depends on what you've got in mind. We can come down here even further. And we can still rotate it all the way over. And then you'll get this kind of movement as it blows off. Now for those of you that aren't familiar with using dummies, you just grab the box, go up to the top, and put set as dummy, and that way it won't render. You won't see it. Now let's say that that, uh, that rolling action is starting a little soon. Well, right here is where your first roll actually starts. But what you can do is just grab this first keyframe and move it up a little. That will make it stay stationary for a while. Then start moving. And we just did it for a few seconds. But that gives you that little bit of pause. You can also come down here and grab all of these keyframes. And move them down. Move them down. Move it. Make it wider. Gap. To make it slower. Smaller gap makes it faster. And that's between all keyframes. And so now you're seeing where, very simply, you can come in here and just make a few changes without even sometimes touching the prop itself and get things to work like you want. And we'll go ahead and just do two and two. And then when you're in very simple physics related scenes, there's also the world scale. We'll just jack it up here so you can see. It really makes it move. Or we can pull it down here. Now I'm not going to get into world scale in this. But it is something you'll need to study. Because it affects every physics object in there. Physics object in there, I'm sorry. Oops, didn't mean to hit that. Move that up to three. And now we're having a little more controllable rollover. And that's really all there is to it. I hope this helps.